What's up everybody, welcome back. In this video, we are moving on with multiplying and dividing rational expressions and we have three other examples. If you didn't go over the examples that I did in the previous video, I highly recommend you do because I go through the steps. I also go through how the restrictions are different when you are dividing rational expressions. So anyway, starting off with number one, first step, you always look for is everything factored and notice how everything is factored here can't factor further then we get the restrictions so the first thing we look at is the denominators so notice here x cubed x squared cannot equal zero that's the same that simplifies they both simplify to x cannot equal zero because if x is 0 here or here, you're going to be dividing by 0. That's going to make everything undefined. But since we are dividing, we also have to look at the numerator of the rational expression that we are dividing by. I mentioned that in the previous video. So notice here, y cannot equal 0. That is a restriction as well. Now, if this was multiplying here, then this here wouldn't be a restriction. It would just be the denominators. x cannot equal 0. But because we are dividing, you have to look at the denominators of both and the numerator of the rational expression that you are dividing. All right, so those are the two restrictions. And then we could simplify. Now, when we are dividing, notice how we're dividing by fractions. So we flip it and then we change this to multiplication. So I just flip this second fraction here. This fraction stayed the same, and now I'm multiplying these two. I'm actually gonna take these, move them a little bit down, give myself some more room. So now what we do is we combine the numerator, combine the denominator. So this here would be 4x squared y right having the x and y in alphabetical order so i put the y in front and then here put the 8 in front i'll have x cubed y squared and now we could simplify this so 4 over 8 it's like 1 over 2 x squared over x cubed so there's two x's up top there's three x's at the bottom that means there's an x left at the bottom so Another way you can do it is algebraically. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So x to the negative 1 means that it goes to the denominator. So this is like x to the 1 over here. And then we got 1y up top, 2y's at the bottom. So we can cancel out one of the y's at the bottom, and we're left with 1y at the bottom. So 1 over 2xy is what this here simplifies to. And again, thought I would have enough room, but uh, let me write it down here. And x cannot equal zero, y cannot equal zero. Those are the restrictions. So this is what it simplifies to. Those are the restrictions. So that is number one right there. So remember when you're dividing, you got to get the restrictions from both the numerator and denominator of the uh, rational expression you're dividing by. Okay, moving on to number two. First thing we do is we factor everything and notice that there's a bunch of stuff we could factor. X squared minus four, that factors to X plus two, X minus two. This here, we could take out a two from both. So we'd be left with three X plus one. And here we're dividing by 2 minus x. And then here we can take out a uh, 3. We're left with 3x plus 1 right there. Okay, let me give myself some more room here. So we factored everything. And now it's time to get the restrictions. So notice 3x plus 1, 3x plus 1 here. So 3x plus 1 cannot equal 0. 
which means that x, if we isolate for it, bring the 1 over, becomes negative 1, divide both sides by 3, we get negative 1 over 3. So x cannot equal negative 1 over 3. That's one of the restrictions. Notice that we're dividing. So we also have to figure out when does that numerator equal 0 for the rational expression that we're dividing by. So basically 2 minus x cannot equal 0. Bring the negative x over. Basically x cannot equal 2. If x is 2, the numerator would be 0, which would make this whole thing 0, and we can't be dividing by 0. Right? So there's three division symbols to take into account. And then the 2 and the 3, those are just numbers. We can't get restrictions from them. There's no variables attached to them. Right? So there's two restrictions in this case. And then from here, you, um, you're dividing. So what you want to do simplify is you want to flip that um, second fraction and then change it to multiplying so then you have 3 3x plus 1 and this will be 2 minus x like that and then from here what you do is you combine everything. So I'm going to skip that step where you're combining it into one fraction. You would just multiply all these, put the 3 in front, multiply all these. From here you can tell once you're multiplying you could cancel out certain factors as long as one is in a denominator and the other is in a numerator. And then notice here x minus 2, 2 minus x, they're almost the same. But if we take out a negative from this you'd end up with negative 2 plus x. Negative 2 plus x is the same as x minus 2. Right, so we just took that 2 minus x and change it to that. Both of these are the same. And now notice these x minus 2's cancel out. And we have this negative, we could bring it up to the numerator. If anything, we could bring it up to that negative 3. I always like to bring negatives up to the numerator. So now we can multiply everything. So we'd have this negative 3 times x plus 2, like that. And then what are we left with in the denominator? This one away, this one away, the negative one up top. We're just left with this 2 here. So that is what these rational functions, rational expressions, simplify to. And those are our two restrictions, right? Moving on to number three. This is a little bit more complex. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the answers here just to give myself some more room. I feel like we're going to need more room when we're factoring these. So first step we want to do is we want to factor. Numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator, if possible. So let's check if we could factor 4x squared minus 8xy minus 5y squared. So basically 4 times 5, 4 times negative 5 rather, is negative 20. And then we have to find two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add up to negative 8. So that would be what? Negative 10 and 2? Both of those work, so we decompose that middle term. So 4x squared minus 10xy plus 2xy. So this negative 8xy we decompose to that minus 5y squared. And from here we could take out a 2x. We'd be left with 2x minus 5y. And from here we could take out a y. And we'd be left with 2x minus 5y. Then we could take out a 2x minus 5y from both. We're left with 2x plus y here. Okay, so this numerator factors into these two. 2x minus 5y and then 2x plus y. And that's going to be all over 2x squared plus 9xy plus 4y squared. So you would follow the same process 
and then um, it's going to factor into what? I think plus 2i. No, it would factor into, sorry, this would be plus 4y, and this would be plus y, like that. Right, so if you take this, follow this same process, 2x squared plus 9xy plus 4y squared, it would factor into 2x plus y, x plus 4y. And then we're going to be multiplying by this rational expression, so we got to factor this as well. Um, 5x squared plus 21xy plus 4y squared. What would this factor into? Well, we can decompose this, so 5 times 4 is 20. Two numbers that multiply to 20 and add up to 21 is 20 and 1. So we would have 20xy plus 1xy plus 4y squared. From here, we could take out a 5x, x plus 4y. Then from here, we could take out a y, and we'd be left with x plus 4y as well. So this would be x plus 4y um, times 5x plus y. All right, so the factoring takes a little bit longer for this one. These expressions are a little bit more complex. They can uh, contain both the x and the y variables. And then finally, we got the denominator of the second rational expression. So we got 2x squared minus 7xy plus 5y squared. So basically, two numbers that multiply to 2 times 5, which is 10, and add up to negative 7, which would be negative 5, negative 2. So we got 2x squared. This decomposes into minus 5xy minus 2xy plus 5y squared. From here, we could take out an x. We're left with 2x minus 5y. Then from here, we could take out a minus y. And we're left with 2x minus 5y. So 2x minus 5y. And then we got x minus y. All right? So this denominator factors into 2x minus 5y and x minus like that. All right, so I think we are all good at this point. So we did the first step. We factored everything, which took quite a while. And once we factor, what we want to do is we want to get the restrictions. So notice that we are multiplying here. So all we have to worry about is the denominators for both rational expressions. If this was dividing, then for this rational expression, we'd have to worry about the numerator and denominator. But since we're just multiplying here, we just have to worry about when does the denominator equal zero. So basically, since all these factors are different, we're going to have four different restrictions. So 2x plus y cannot equal zero. Now remember, when you have two variables, you just pick one of them to isolate for. So I feel like in this case, it's probably easier to isolate for the y, but um, usually I just isolate for the x, so that's what I'm going to do. But if you were to isolate for the y, basically here, y cannot equal what? When you bring this over, negative 2x. But I'm actually going to isolate for the x. So here, when I bring this over, 2x, cannot equal negative y, which means x cannot equal negative y over 2. So that's one of the restrictions. Another one, x plus 4y cannot equal 0. So notice in this case, really easy to isolate for the x. You just bring the negative or the positive 4y over, and it turns into negative 4y. So that's another restriction. 
uh, here we'd have 2x minus 5y cannot equal 0, <clears throat> which means 2x cannot equal positive 5y, which means x cannot equal 5y over 2. That's the third restriction. And then the fourth one, we got x minus y cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal y. So those are your four restrictions right there. I basically took all of the factors and the denominators and they can't equal zero. And then you just pick one of the variables to isolate for, I chose X, but you could also choose Y if you want. Same process would apply. So those are the restrictions and now we simplify. So since we're multiplying, if we were to combine these into one fraction, Basically, we would have something like this, right? And then from here, we can simplify. So notice x plus 4y cancels out. The 2x plus y's cancel out here. The 2x minus 5y's cancel out there. So what are we left with? We're just left with 5x plus y over x minus y. So that's what it simplifies to, and those are the four restrictions.